One other quick thing. So I have a couple of uh, family members that work for the IRS and all this talk about, um, you know, how the rich people will try and pay taxes and, you know, how the, um, the agents will force them to pay. My aunt is one of those people that works with settling the debts. And she says that she basically has to beg all these rich people. Hey, you know, you owe all this money. Can you really sell like your third house to help pay for this? And it's just an absolute mess. Interesting. I appreciate the call. Um, yep. I, I, you know, that reminded me, I wanted to talk about this uh, today briefly. We did a video, um, and, and, and one of the, I don't even know how to uh, describe this cohort of people now. These supposed uh, leftists who perceive the IRS as some type of evil government entity. Remember, this is the mechanism in which we both raise revenue for the government, but most importantly, also the key tool if you want to deal with wealth and income inequality, and that is through the tax code. That is the way we've got this runaway wealth and income inequality was a function of, of tax changes that took place. And then over the past 10 years, it's really been maybe closer to 12, there has been a massive defunding of the IRS. And uh, we talked about this uh, last week in a video that we did. When people are claiming that this the, uh, the money in um, the Inflation Reduction Act that was earmarked for the IRS, people are claiming that this is going to be a way to go after working class people, low income people for, uh, for, for more tax revenue. And this dynamic, there, there is no question about what has happened over the past 10, 12 years. The IRS was, um, was defunded. And what happened was that because the IRS was defunded significantly, the IRS audited less people, period, end of story. They audited millionaires and wealthy people at a much uh, a more diminished rate than they did people who are low income receiving earned income tax credit. So first up here, look at this. This is the IRS di data books from 2010 to 2019. This is, if I was to show you the funding of the IRS, the graphic would look almost identical to this. But you can see that the audit rate of millionaires went from above 12% to below 3% over the course of those 10 years, or actually nine years, 2010 to 2019. That is simply a fact. It is also a very easily Googleable fact. Here's what also happened in real terms. You could see in 2010, the top 1% of taxpayers, the percent of returns that were audited was about 4.8% or so. And the percent of returns that were audited for earned income tax credits which is actually a payment from the government. Was it about 2.5%? By 2018, because of reductions in the budget of the IRS, both cohorts dropped. But the earned income tax recipients dropped at a much slower rate relative to the top 1% of taxpayers. So in 2010, the number of uh, top 1% taxpayers' uh, returns that were audited was almost a little bit less than double that of the EITC. By 2018, it was almost the same rate of auditing. Both had dropped. There was much less enforcement for both uh, cohorts. And so there is every reason to believe. Well, let me put it this way. Past performance is no guarantee of future uh, performance. However, between that, those facts, and the um, the treasurer, the the Janet Yellen, 
uh, the Treasury Secretary saying, we're not going to audit anybody making less than $400,000. We're not going to increase audits on anybody making less than $400,000. And the fact that this is very transparent data, which you're theoretically going to be able to see in a year. Um, there's every reason to believe that's what's going to actually happen. Because the bottom line is, and plus, they, they scored it in this budget. The bottom line is, that's where the money is. It's common sense, right? If you want to actually take back money that is rightfully owed for the go to the government, you're going to go after the bigger fish if you have more tools at your disposal. Right, and you can actually, like go up against all the lawyers and all the accounts that they do yes. to obscure the fact that they're hiding money. And there, but the bottom line is there is absolutely zero reason to believe that not only a, the IRS is going to go after low income people more now with adequate funding, but B when anybody talks about the IRS being jackbooted thugs, they are, using conservative talking points. Mm -hmm. I don't care what's in their hearts. And they're either doing so because they're completely ignorant, because I'll tell you, you Google and you can find that data is like the number one or two hits. It's easy. It's there. What is the rate of auditing for wealthy people versus low income people in this country? Historically, over the past 10 years, you can find that it's very easy. So anybody who's saying anything else, they are either out of ignorance, repeating right-wing talking points, or for a specific reason, they are pushing right-wing talking points. Yeah, it's always been right-wing. Do you know when the IRS was founded? Yes, it was 1918. Uh, no, that's uh, what they always like to emphasize because the actual founding, July 1st, 1862, um, for the first national income tax during the Civil War. This is ah, a Confederate uh, argument, Confederates wow. and Copperheads. So yeah. uh, Lincoln is uh, responsible for the IRS, but you'd, you'd rather talk about the one in like 19 uh, whenever. Because, 17 or whenever they did the, uh, the income tax amendment. Yeah, because uh, the national income tax is harder to attack because it makes you look like what you are, a Confederate or a copperhead yep and, and i mean honestly it can't be a leftist position to want a reduced irs because of the uh data that you describe in that history too matt but also because if you're claiming that you want like these robust social programs where taxation is needed in order to raise the revenue needed for say like a medicare for all program or any kind of like I don't know, the, 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 the child tax credit, I guess, you would need a mechanism to do that. And that's what the IRS would be, at least in the way that like the government talks about the way that it funds things. Yes. I mean, I'm a, I, I, I don't think that we necessarily need to raise this revenue to, to expend it uh, because we, as a government, print money, literally print money. But nevertheless, if you want any type of income, uh, if you want any type of income or wealth uh, parity in this or even remotely close to it, there is only one mechanism or I should say the most efficient mechanism to do that is um, confiscatory taxes by the IRS. And at the very least, they should be um, collecting the money that is actually owed. Remember, incidentally, the IRS audits people and gets money that is owed in terms of taxes. It's not going after people who don't, uh, who are, or who um, don't owe money in terms of taxation. I mean, that's just also a right-wing talking point, which I think makes it apropos to play this uh, thing. You guys remember that guy who came on uh, the, uh, I will get his name right, Jackson Hinkle. Good job. Yeah, I keep calling him Jason. Because yeah. Jackson's, I don't know, not really a boy's name, but that's all right. Uh, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, no, I just I, I, I said ja Jason before. And it's so just, yeah, it's out. easier. It rolls more off the tongue, I guess. And uh, generally, I'm not terribly uh, interested in what this guy did, but this was funny. Uh, I don't know. I think somebody tagged me on uh, Twitter or something with this. But uh, OAN is the Trump, um, uh, the Trump network, right? I mean, they're the ones who came out there. This and Matt brought this up the other day, and I, I thought it was like a half joke. Um, the idea of MAGA communism, and and, and let me be clear: like uh, we had a communist working on the show for a couple of years. Um, 
I have uh, a lot of respect for uh, for for communists. Um, uh, that guy uh, Ben Norton, uh, like I, I've seen him. You know, I, I, like for me personally, I think it's a little bit utopian uh, and difficult. Um, uh, Mike over at uh, Empire Files too. I have a lot of respect for. But as I've said in the past, I don't. I don't actually have uh, a problem with the system necessarily uh, economically, and certainly every step along the way, I'm here for. And to the extent that this uh, that uh, communism could ever be adopted, I, I'm not going to be around for that anyways. Um, and so I don't have a you know problem per se uh, with communism. I have uh, questions uh, about how it would function, and um, you know somewhat of the utopian nature. But like I say, as opposed to the utopia that libertarians talk about, which I think is completely bad crap crazy. Every step along the way to that libertarian utopia is a dystopia. Yeah. Uh, every step along the way to communism just means more power to the people, more democracy, um, uh, less exploitation, and uh, basically measuring the success of a society based upon the aggregate of everyone's success as opposed to just those at the top. But the idea of MAGA communism is uh, is a joke. But what's also fascinating is like, 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 I, first of all, MAGA, this is just branding. Listen to this. It's not anything. Yeah. You know, I came across you uh, most recently with the, the trend, the trending hashtag MAGA communism. Um, now, a lot of people are going to hear that hashtag MAGA communism and be a little bit confused. So I'm going to let you explain what that means, because I don't think you're a communist, Jackson. Well, I actually am a communist, but. At the end of the day, communists have a lot of the same goals as working class Americans made up in the MAGA movement. We want more prosperity for average Americans. We want to end big tech. We want to end big agriculture, big pharma. We want to stop the monopolies and the subsidization of monopolies all across trust. America. And we want to reinstill Positive. patriotic education. We should also education. say, like, stopping the monopolies is also on the list of things that Elizabeth Warren wants yeah. to do. Yeah, like, I consider myself a Marxist, and but when I bring in my sort of, like, like antitrust spiel it's not like coming straight from Karl Marx That's no <laughs> no no it's not in fact in fact I mean I don't know uh, it, it, uh, you know how um, you know well, what his branding is today but if you're for state communism um, the concept of monopolies in and of themselves are not necessarily a bad yeah, thing you right. want state now, monopolies and all uh, that stuff now uh, big agriculture in a different sense i think if you're like a an anarchic uh communism uh, communist then it's a different story um but uh monopolies in and of themselves are not necessarily a problem but I, this is so convoluted it's amazing but it's also uh funny Today, communists have a lot of the same goals as working class Americans made up in the MAGA movement. We want more prosperity for average Americans. We want to end big tech. We want to end big agriculture, big pharma. We want to stop the monopolies and the subsidization of monopolies all across America. And we want to reinstill patriotic education in this country. We don't want open borders. We don't want, you know, a green fascist uh, push uh, amongst our people. Positive These are things that we support. Does someone, someone tell me what a green fascist push is? The uh, Green New Deal, I think. Yeah. Just talking about. Mm. I mean, now, doesn't the hamburgers. Green New Deal involve like um, undercutting uh, the big energy, and doesn't it involve like uh, providing subsidies for workers? And yeah, there's the just transition element, which yeah. is what makes the Green New Deal notable. I mean, it should maybe be bolstered, but it's there. Yeah, it's the trend. They, 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 one of the planks is, I think, the transition for like uh, people who will Major lose their part. who will lose their jobs due to coal, you know, coal detransitioning into into you know green jobs. Or in other words, 
fascism. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> green fascism. <laughs> it's the increased involvement of the state in like energy production. Because I mean, it's not he's not inconsistent in terms of like he didn't say he wants to end uh, big big energy. He just wants to end big tech and uh, big agriculture. I don't know what ending big te- big tech we want more uh, entails there. More competition. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm 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 down for that too. I yes. Mean, like, uh, oh, you're a communist. I, not I, a I guess congrats. I'm not a communist. Yes, Let's and go. so is Elizabeth Warren. I guess right reinstill patriotic education in this country we don't want open borders we don't want you know a green fascist uh push uh, amongst push. our people these aren't things that we support because we are average americans as well and the synthetic leftists today the democratic party and the so-called progressives they're far close though they might call themselves socialists they're far closer aligned with you know the quote-unquote national socialists in uh, nazi germany huh. than any sort of you know Socialism Pause that it for a we second. Please, so what, what is it? First wait, off, who sorry. just t- called for patriotic education? Well, <laughs> well, wait, what is what is <gasps> quote unquote national socialist mean? Like, I don't understand. Like, why? What? Like, what? What? What's? What's the? Well, what's around that? I what's think the, what he means is like, you know how Tucker, uh, this guy's idol, always says, "I don't even know if Nazis exist." Yeah. I think that's where he's saying, like, quote unquote, like they always say national socialists, even though they don't exist, but they actually do exist because it's AOC. I know it's just a <laughs> weird, uh, weird sort of construct. But uh, all right, hey, go ahead. They're far closer aligned with, you know, the aligned quote unquote national with people socialists from the history in uh, Nazi Germany than any oh, sort of, it. you know, socialism that we see unfolding of true industrialization in, say, China today or the Soviet Union. And though, you know, average Americans can have many disputes and uh, concerns over the Soviet Union <laughs> or China today. We have to recognize that these are two countries that chose industrialization over the World Economic Forum uh, path today that's pushing depopulation and degrowth. Pause it for a second. This is like such a word salad that I can't even quite follow what the hell he's talking about. First of all, we just the Democrats just basically passed a bill that was um, a a big industrialization bill. I mean, that's really what it was. Um, the the Inflation Reduction Act oh, sorry, is basically, right, right. Um, you know, uh, pouring money into, um, uh, well, green fascist uh, sectors, I guess, but it is industrialized. Maybe he doesn't agree with it. And, that, and now he's talking about, like, he, the, the I, I can't even quite. Yeah, Joe Biden is not a degrowther. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, this is. I mean, he says he's not for open borders. He's not for the Green New Deal. He's for like larger investment into industrialization. Yeah. So, bro, you're just like Joe Biden. I like that this like what like twenty year old kid is saying. We need to reinstill patriotic education. Like, what do you mean reinstill? Like, I, and it's the Democrats who are the Nazis. As I say, we have to close the borders, and uh, I want the, our education to be more reflective of like American might. I'd right. like to see what his patriotic education looks like. Yeah. Indeed. All right, let's continue. This is like a huge word salad. It's fascinating. These are two countries that chose industrialization over the World Economic Forum uh, path today that's pushing depopulation and degrowth. So we as communists want to unite with MAGA voters and finish the job of Donald Trump, uh, which is, you know, uprooting liberalism from America and getting the globalists out of the MAGA movement, because there's so many globalists that are trying to well, pause for a second. Now, wait a second. So Donald Trump started the job of getting rid of globalists in the MAGA movement. Were there globalists in the MAGA movement? He he mentions to at the end that he thinks are like quote unquote. Oh, let's. I, I wonder. I wonder who they are. But wait a second. There are globalists in the MAGA movement. Are they secret globalists? I mean, did who let them into the MAGA movement? Well, Trump did. But why yeah. would Trump d- let yeah, them in wonder, just to right? get them out? Oh, it's a whole Q thing. Yeah. I get it. Uprooting liberalism from America and getting the globalists out of the MAGA movement because there's so many globalists that are trying to co opt the, the MAGA movement and bring about neoconservatism in the MAGA movement. We need to do away with that. We need to do away with people like John Bolton and Mike Pompeo and make sure that this is truly a working class movement. Pause it for a second. The, the, the fascinating thing, too, is that like neoconservatism is a um is it essentially rooted in foreign policy it it's is not a, it, well no and, it's and, not it's well it, yeah it is true. fundamentally a um a foreign policy disposition 
and um, I, 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 we should be clear. Mike Pompeo and John Bolton were were appointed to office by Donald Trump. Um, but I guess it's, I don't know, maybe globalism is the biggest threat that U.S. faces. I, I just wonder how they're using globalism. Well, that's the thing is, like, they tried, in Jackson, they tried to project on Trump this anti-neoconservative actor, but, like, he's perfectly fine with neoconservatives unless they do something against him individually. Right, exactly. <laughs> the, the idea. But here, let's just hear this part because you're going to need this. Uh, I this just thought week. he was for sure going to say Mnuchin, right? Like, I thought that that was his going to well. be immediately. Oh, well, <laughs> hold that is, thought. Okay. Close. Here we go. You know, communists today in America don't support the eradication of, say, private property or anything mm. like that. What we support is more growth, more wealth, more businesses for the people, you know, until we reach a point where we have, you know, economic prosperity for all. So, you know, again, it's the, Pause the it for a second. Com- Hold on for a second. <laughs> and now this part I did not know. And I learned false. something uh, about communism. <laughs> Do not support um, the uh, eradication of uh, any type of private property or it sounds like even businesses. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is like, so just for anybody who's not in tune with what this sort of debate is, I'll speak for the communists here. Uh, private property does not mean sort of like your Xbox that's under personal property. Personal what they property. mean is like sort of large capital investments like, uh, I don't know, oil derricks or uh, dams and stuff like that. Um, or even it depends on which industry you go, it gets different. But those things should not be owned by a capitalist uh they should be owned by the workers that actually um provide the labor that have made the wrong purchase wrong <laughs> or, uh, or or communism means more businesses for the people <laughs> it just means like market incentives uh, yeah. this is just ne- neoliberal communism yeah, hashtag. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, i think this uh mr hinkle here has a um has a, has a little uh, bone to pick with you <laughs> with your warped idea of uh of, of marxism and of <laughs> communism you know, communists today in America don't support the eradication of, say, private property or anything like that. What we support is more growth, more wealth, more businesses for the people, you know, more until businesses. we reach a point where we have, you know, economic prosperity for all. So, you know, again, it, the, the word communism has been so, so uh, muddied by liberals today and by people like George Soros. Oh, yeah. Free market communism for all. <laughs> Yeah, Soros. George Soros keeps coming into all these leftist spaces saying, no, we actually do need to seize private property um, for the people. <laughs> um, when the real message from Karl Marx is, we just need more businesses for the people. <laughs> well, that's what so- that is why Soros is so sneaky. Because mm. he comes in and says that... Takes ultra-left positions. <laughs> he, he, well, he maligns communism by saying that it is... Um, it is, you know, uh, you, you can't have capitalists own private property. And that, of course, is we know is a slur and a smear of communism. Um, and of course, uh, communism traditionally in this country um, only attacked uh, by uh, liberals. Never, never the right in this country. Yeah. Um, it was. It is. Uh, he did like kind of run the gambit uh, of all political ideologies in that one answer, right? He started from where he started to where he ended up. He emptied the clip. Yep. There you go. Well, uh, it's, it's so funny when he pedals back to Soros. Like when you just talk a little bullshit and say, and it's Soros doing it, and you can get you know your hundred people from Newsmax or wherever the fuck he was on. That's crazy. Yeah. Interesting branding. Uh, um, uh, mechanism. Good luck getting those guys to read uh, the Communist Manifesto. Yes, that would be interesting to see what happens at that point. It is really what is impressive about the, that guy is um, what a um, a whore for a camera. Like, I mean, it's it is oh, pretty yeah. impressive. Like, I mean, so much so that I think like it, it's it's going to be interesting. Like that it overwhelms even his sort of sense of of uh you know uh, desperately wanting to um the, to get attention like i think yeah. he, he, the i my sense is that the maga communism probably not going to take him where he thinks he wants yeah to go. i think tucker carlson's going to be bored of that one in about yesterday and uh 
It's gonna be interesting to see, like when those. No, no, no. He'll, he'll show up on on on, on Tucker at least oh, once. a like, couple more times. I'm so interested in this MAGA communism. What is that? But he'll get bored. And uh, there's only so many times you can say, "Well, it's really about George Soros <laughs> and him pulling the strings," and that's basically what uh, what we're all about. Yeah. I mean, when's the last time Doors been back on there? Right? Like uh, I he no he, he likes to he likes to use them and, and leave them. But but the point Tucker. is like also that. He, he if Hinkle said I'm a Teddy Roosevelt style populist, uh, he wouldn't be invited to any of this stuff because no. it wouldn't be intriguing. But MAGA, MAGA communism is a good way to get booked. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how, but it's fascinating. Uh, North Dakota Lama, same, uh, shame on you, Sam. It's been 30 minutes. You haven't criticized AOC. Uh, Jackson Hinkle would be furious.